Hi, Dr. Goldberg here, uh, continuing our infectious disease lecture series. Today we're talking about fever of unknown origin. This is part two. Uh, we're going to look at seven more categories of uh, fevers, uh, and hopefully this will help cement the differential diagnosis uh, into your brain. Uh, number one, Munchausen syndrome. We see people with Munchausen syndrome, not frequently, but you have to be aware of it. Uh, occasionally, it uh, uh, this whole entity will will show up. So think about Munchausen syndrome uh, at times. Number two, people who've had international travel take a good history. Where have they been? Uh, are they are they at risk for chicken gunya? Are they at risk for malaria? Are they at risk for parasitic diseases, uh, which can be worm diseases, uh, anything from uh, schistosomiasis to echinococcosis. You know, take a good history of where people have traveled. Um, number three, people who present with abdominal pain, diarrhea, and the stool uh, testing is negative. That setting, you want to think about ischemic bowel. You want to think about inflammatory bowel disease. You want to think about like Crohn's or whatever. And then you want to think about uh, Whipple's disease. Um, you know, looking for Trophorima Whipley. So, that's a whole nother category. Next category is a person that has fever and presents with increased LFTs or with jaundice. They have obstructive jaundice, may have uh, uh, jaundice uh, of other etiology, but these people will frequently have transaminitis. So we break these down into viral causes, uh, parasitic causes, bacterial causes, uh, such as sepsis, leptospirosis, uh, Borrelia. Uh, if they've got viral causes for their transaminitis, they may have EBV, they may have HSV, they may have CMV, they may have HIV, they may have the classic hepatitis A, B, C, or D. Uh, so, got to think about uh, all these things when you're when you're seeing somebody that's jaundiced with a fever. Fifth category is fever in the setting of hemolytic anemia. Many infections cause hemolysis. Uh, there's bacterial causes such as staph, strep, pneumococcal disease, especially if there's sepsis present, uh, bacterial endocarditis, salmonellosis, uh, E. coli O157, uh, mycoplasma can cause a hemolytic anemia uh, as well. Viral diseases such as EBV need to be thought about. Parasitic diseases or protozoal diseases must also be entertained depending on their travel. Uh, or whether they've got, you know, cats, toxoplasmosis, that type of thing. The sixth big category is uh, fever in the setting of myositis or rhabdomyolysis. Uh, again, this can be pyogenic related to staph, strep, uh, MRSA, pneumococcal infection, or it can be non-pyogenic related to viral infection, tick-borne diseases, uh, or parasitic diseases again, such as uh, toxoplasmosis or trichinella, that type of thing. Lastly, the uh, seventh uh, additional cause is fever in the setting of joint pains. Uh, this can be very helpful. Um, differential is going to be viral disease, again, such as parvovirus, you know, B19, uh, such as other viruses, such as rubella, hepatitis, uh, multiple uh, viruses can do this. And then there's the atypical bacteria like Lyme disease. Uh, but then there's non-infectious causes such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, you know, those types of collagen vascular diseases. And of course, fungal diseases are associated with arthritis at times such as sporotrichosis. Uh, and then of course, Whipple's disease can sometimes be associated with significant joint pain. So, um, septic uh, arthritis is a no-brainer, uh, but sometimes people just have polyarthralgias uh, with their fever. So you need to think big picture. So uh, hopefully this will help you as you think about fever on the origin. Thanks, Dr. Goldberg, signing off.